Welcome to Cooking with the Council. Today we have Tiffany Derry of Root Southern Table and Mayor Robert Dye. Tiffany is going to teach Mayor Dye one of her favorite recipes. Tiffany is the owner of Root Southern Table and Root's Chicken Shack. And the Root Southern Table will open at the Shops at Mustang Station located at Valley View Lane and B Street coming soon. But in the meantime, I want to tell you a little bit about Tiffany and how we met her. Tiffany gained international notoriety on the seventh season of Bravo's Top Chef and as a finalist on Top Chef All-Stars. Currently, she is a recurring judge on Top Chef Junior on the Universal Kids Network. She sits on the James Beard Foundation Impact Advisory Board, as well as the Food Policy Action Board of Directors, and as ambassador for the Beard Foundation's Food Waste Initiative. And she frequently travels to foreign countries as a culinary ambassador to the United States. And I know for a fact, she has personally cooked for Oprah on one of these past Thanksgivings. So now she really is the real deal. Mayor Robert Dye became the mayor of Farmers Branch in 2017. Mayor Dye grew up in Farmers Branch, graduated from R.L. Turner, Texas Tech and SMU, and wanted to serve his hometown community in a capacity as mayor. So we welcome both of them to this show. And I look forward to even learning myself how to cook the proper steak and potatoes. But first, I wanna learn a little personal history about the both of them. Tiffany, can you tell us a little bit about why you love cooking so much and what you do when you're out of the kitchen? Yes, first off, thank you, Allison and Mayor for having me here. It is an honor to cook with everyone. Um, one of the things that I love and probably the reason that I love food the most is uh, my family. You know, I grew up with parents who loved food, grandmother who had 11 children, all of them cooked, and it was always good food around the table. It was a moment where we had some great conversation. It's where I grew up, um, and it's just what I love to do. So anybody who loves to eat should definitely learn how to cook. So um, I started working at IHOP and kind of worked my way up and ended up doing some of the shows, like you said, and now I'm owning my own restaurant. So food has definitely been a part of who I am. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Mayor Dye, I know you also have a cooking background. It's mainly with the microwave, but um, can you tell us some things that you like to do in your free time? Uh, it's, it's go to places and eat uh, just because I, I can't cook. Uh, Allison is not joking when uh, my number one uh, utensil in terms of cooking is my microwave. Uh, it's <laughs> most, if, if I have something to eat at the house, it is going in the microwave or I've had it delivered uh, via Uber Eats or DoorDash or I'm bringing it home from a restaurant that, that I frequent. But uh, I can say that I eat often, uh, if you can't tell. Um, but I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just, you know, I love going out to eat. I love the whole experience and I am super excited that Roots is going to be, you know, just 150 paces away from my front door uh, so that I can <laughs> walk over there and have someone properly make this steak you're going to teach me how to make today because uh, while today's will be good, um, I'm assuming that in a few weeks I might forget how to make it and I'll be very happy when uh, you're open and I can just go get the real deal right there myself. I have a feeling you might master the steak and you won't need me anymore. You won't need me anymore. <laughs> no, I'll, st I'll still need you. The dining in experience is my, that's my, that's my thing. So. We'll, we'll all need you. <laughs> yeah. some, some is a need and some is a want. Well, uh, these days when I hear roots, just cause we're quarantined, I don't know if I think about vegetables or family, I'm thinking about other things. Um, so I can't wait for everybody to open up um, and get these roots taken care of some too. But Tiffany, can you help um, start us off with what are y'all making today? And yeah. um, tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so I feel like every person, especially every man, should know how to make steak and potatoes. Like this is something that everyone loves to eat. And if you're gonna love to eat it, you must know how to cook it. Because you know, sometimes people complain about things and they don't even know how to cook it. So here we go, I'm gonna teach you how to cook it. Um, we have a couple of ingredients. I'm gonna show you, uh, Mayor, I wanna make sure that you have these ingredients as well. Mm -hmm. um, we have to have a steak. What was the steak of your choice? I went with a 100% grass-fed boneless ribeye steak. I like it. All right. I see you know a thing or two about it. Okay. Um, I went with also 
the same ribeye, but with the North Carolina cut ribeye, bonus ribeye as well. And um, when we're talking about ribeye, ribeye is one of those pieces of meat that is incredibly tender. And part of the reason that it's tender is because of the marbling, which is the fat that runs in between um, the layers of, of the meat, right? So um, it's not about how much fat's around it, it's about how much is in between. And that's where you're gonna get the juicy and the tenderness of the steak. Um, ribeye also has a very meaty flavor, so it's almost one of the meatiest of steaks. So it's my personal favorite, so I'm happy that we're both in the ribeye family. Um, and anytime that we're having a steak, we also must need something a little bit lighter. So we have a arugula. So I have an arugula salad. Don't you have some lettuce as well? Don't you have arugula? What kind did you do? I do. Oh, I got a 50-50 mix of uh, arugula and spinach. Oh, lovely. Okay, perfect. And then we're just going to do a light lemon olive oil, um, quick vinaigrette on our salad. And then we okay. also have some potatoes working. So did you parboil your potatoes? I did. And okay, they're so resting right, right over here. Okay, I'm going to grab mine now. Um, okay. For everyone else, when we're talking about parboiling um, potatoes, you want to partially cook them so that when we cook them again in the skillet, skillet they're going to be nice and a little bit of crunchy on the outside and very tender in the inside. And it shortens the cook time. So I'm going to grab mine. And we boiled it in the skin. Um, and that's really easy to do. So you just take that potato, put it in cold water, all tubers. Um, root vegetables that grow underground need to be cooked in cold water to start with, just so everyone knows. Mm. Okay, let's get started. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, stay. We're well, gonna were, we gonna, were we gonna toast first? Oh, you shoot, know look, at, look at where your mind's at. Look at, you look know? At. Okay, let's I was, do it. I was okay, excited okay. for that, that part of it. Okay, well, I'm already open, so I don't know who was more excited. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, that's true. Fair point. <laughs> oh, you had that in the house ready to go. You had that wine opener. Yeah, you know, you got to be able to open a bottle of wine. <laughs> so. What are you drinking? Plus, I, I'm going with a, a nice, nice cab from uh, Paso Robles, California. Okay. Figured right, to pair, pair okay. well, pair well with this steak. Uh, I'm going to do a little bella glossy because I really like a pinot. Um, and I like okay. the bella because it's got a nice, uh, got a nice finish and some strong tannins. So it'll hold up okay. Besides, I'll keep drinking this one far when the steak is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Allison, you have your glass too? Nope. Drop the I, it, I am working on that. I didn't even think I was in the mix. To... Y'all go ahead. Okay. Okay. Cut, that cut that out. Cut that out. Toast to a great steak tonight. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Okay. Now. Okay. Are you ready now? I am. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our saute pan on. You want it at a medium high heat. Do you have numbers or do you have what kind of stove? Do you have a stove um, that is gas or electric? Oh, this is electric. They didn't okay. want to trust me with the gas. What's your numbers? Uh, uh, I go from low to high with one to eight. Okay, low so low and high on the outside. Let's go six. Okay. So the first step in any steak, any meat, anything we're cooking is to heat up the pan. We must always heat the pan up without anything in it, and that's going to also help eat. Um, coat it evenly, but also so that it will sear properly. When we sear okay. properly, it keeps all the juice in. So that's the first step. So pan is heated up. Uh, let me see how much salt you're going to put. You want to be generous with the amount of salt that you add on the steak. So I want to see how much you're putting on. Okay. Make it, rain. Black Make it rain with black pepper. All right. And then after you do that, you want to turn it over and do that again to the other side. Perfect. Remember, you need to be generous. If you don't season it, 
I'm not going to have a chase you think. Do you watch uh, Parks and Rec? I have. Um, not often, but I have. Oh, I just, you know, when I think of cooking steaks and meat, I think of Ron Swanson, who is always like, this is meat. You can put salt and pepper on it if you want. If not, just put it on the grill. You're like, it's not okay. No, no, no. We're not going to follow It's not this. okay? No, 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 we're not gonna follow his. No, no. Well, it's just no, a TV no. show anyway, so just shouldn't. A, just it. a TV show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, how you look? Let me see it again. Let me see your steak. Coming back. Nice. Okay, cool. All right. So let's check out our pan. Let's see how hot it is. We want it to be um, pretty hot at this point. Um, so mine feels good. Can you slightly touch or put your hand right above without actually touching the pan? to see yep. how hot it is. Yes. You know, it's warm. I don't know okay. how warm. Okay. So is it warm enough for you to go a little lower and fill the pan? If I was a braver person. <laughs> okay, well, let's cut it up a little bit more. Let's throw <laughs> your pan up. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've, I've burned my hand on the, on the oven too many times to Okay, and Make so the other thing again. you want to keep is your towel. So if you'll yep. notice, a lot of times when I'm doing things, I often have my towel in my hand because I usually will touch the saute pan with my towel anytime that I'm over here working. Okay. Keep it, keep it near. Um, okay, so a couple of other things we'll need with the steak. First, we must have another drink. Nice. Always helps. Garlic cloves. Now... You have garlic, right? Mm hmm We're going to leave it in the uh -huh. skin. Okay. So I, I just crack this more. open with a knife? Okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to show you the easier way. Ooh, good. Take your garlic and your towel. Put your garlic on the board. Okay. Put your towel right on top of it. And then take your hand and just push it, like smash it. Did it all fall apart? Yep. Perfect. There you go. So I want one or two in the skin? Yep. Keep that off to the side, and then we'll have that for the steak. And we'll also have some rosemary and oregano. And we'll have some butter to base with. Grab me a okay. big spoon if you can as well while you're there. Doesn't have to be crazy big, but that's my big. Yep, about the same. Okay, great. All right, let's go check this pan again. It's Mine's pretty warm. Pretty hot. How hot is yeah. yours? It's pretty you warm. Still smoke yet? Come clear. Yep. All right. So now we're gonna add a little oil. You ready? This part we need ready? to do a little quick. So we're gonna add our oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. You saw how much I put? Not a lot. Yep. Because the steak is going to have a little fat itself. And now I add the steak directly into the pan. We need the pan to be hot. You see that smoke? There's a little smoke coming off, right? Yep. And that's it. Let it sit. Let me see you. Is it in there? It's in there. It's this one. Okay, good. Can you hear it? I can hear it. All right, cool. That's good. We did the right thing then. Good. Breathe. Breathe, breathe. We did good. Now we just let it do its thing. So okay. at some point, my vent hood will come on because um, it needs it. Well, I'm going to just turn it on. Um, and then in about two or three minutes, we'll turn it over. When we turn it over, we'll add in our garlic and our herbs and a little butter and, and start basting it. And that's going to keep it really flavorful. Until then, okay. let's do our potatoes. All right. So steak is in the pan. Put your potato on the cutting board. Got your knife. Let's do one steak at a, I mean one potato at a time. Okay. And we're gonna cut slices. About a fourth an inch.
I think I'm doing it correct. Yes, you are. Looks good. Okay, cool. Yeah, great job. We'll set that off to the side. Watch your fingers. You feel how the potatoes are not really hard. It's kind of soft, but they're still holding together. Yeah. That's good. And I actually like leaving the skin because when I cook them, um, it gets all crispy. I like that little crunchy for later. So you will only be able to cook really one potato in that pan um, at a time. Just FYI. Okay. You can cook the rest of it later. All right. How's your face looking? You see it? You're not smoking too much, are you? No, I don't think so. It's got a little, but not too okay. much for the, for the house. Okay, cool. Great. That's it. So my steak's not, not sticking at all. Can you shake yours? Yeah. Not sticking? It moves. Perfect. Not sticking. It's got some movement to it. There. there we okay. go. Grab your butter. And I want you just to take a little knot just so that you have a small piece ready to go. Okay. How much? Like a Ooh. tablespoon? Yeah, maybe two. Two, two tablespoons. tablespoons. Okay. All right. Let's go over with our garlic and pop your garlic into your pan. With okay. the, the sh with all of it on and let's flip your steak. Let's see what you're looking at. Looks a little like yours. Looks flip like it. mine? Yep. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. All right, let's start some searing action. Let's baste it. I'm going to add my rosemary, and I'm also going to add my um, oregano. Okay. And my butter, and, my, and I have my spoon. Okay, let's do it. Watch me first. I'm going to, one second. One. Okay, you're watching me? I'm watching. See my butter? Yep. Butter's gonna melt quickly. I want you first, instead of putting yours, put it here, put your herb on top so that it doesn't pop. Okay. And then you're just gonna take your butter and baste it over your steak. Okay? All right. Let me see you do it. Let's do it. So it started on top of the steak? Put, the, put your herbs on top because it's not, uh -huh. it'll pop because it has water in it. Put your okay. butter in the pan. Okay. In the and pan. Then take, this, take your spoon and as it's melting, just keep putting the butter on top of the steak. Spooning it up on top. Almost like a circular rotation. Almost it's a little therapy. It's a little steak therapy. And all of the flavor from the garlic is infusing into the butter and the herb is infused into the steak. So you're gonna have all that flavor going back into the steak. Mm. How you smell, can you smell it? It smells fantastic. And I'm just realizing <laughs> that I've been making steak wrong my entire life. <laughs> so just keep basting or? Yeah, you can do it. You can stop. Okay. You're not you're not black, are you? It's not too black, is it? No. The o the oil and butter. It's uh getting a little brown. Okay, good. Okay, great. So let me look on the other side of my steak and make sure I brown the other side. And so what we normally do, you see that? I'm gonna go just a little bit further. That's not brown okay. enough. Um, in a restaurant, we would typically take our saute pan, and that saute pan, hot like this, would go directly in the oven. Um, so a lot of times, we start cooking on the top, finish in the oven. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually take my steak out of the pan, put it into another pan, and pop it in the oven so that I can use this saute pan that has that, like, Steak fat, you know, all the flavor, and we're going to yeah. put our potatoes in back. So it's going to add on more flavor. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. 
You see what I'm going? You see where I'm going with this? You picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> I am. <laughs> you know, is this, uh, w would you say this is one of your favorite things to cook or what's your absolute favorite meal to make? Oh, it's such a hard question for us, Jeff, because it's all about what I feel like eating in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But I am a steak girl. Like, trust and believe. I do love a good steak. Um, the other night, I made picanha. Are you familiar with picanha, like from the Brazilian steak houses? I am not. Okay, so um, a lot of the Brazilian have a top sirloin cut in. Um, you have to you have to cook it medium rare to medium in order for it to have full flavor. But I cooked it the other day on the grill, and it was fantastic. And it's a cheap cut of meat; it's not expensive. And when I tell you it was so good, I was like, "You did that." <laughs> <laughs> really it's was. always good when you can can impress yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I love my parents. My mom cooks amazing food. She's from Louisiana. Um, and I get a lot of those great flavors from her. So okay. gumbo, um, anything that she cooks, I'm all for it. Okay, so Cajun I'm here. My steak is sizzling. Yours is sizzling. Okay, come get this color. So see, you're here now. Okay. I'm going to come show you my color so you'll know where to go. So once it looks like it does on the front at the top, uh -huh. we're good. Yep. And I'm going to put it off to the side. Okay. I'm gonna leave one of my garlic cloves in there and I'm just gonna pour a little of that good butter right on the top and I'm gonna pop my steak right in the oven. The oven is set at 425. We're gonna do that for about four or three, four minutes. You with me? I'm with you. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Looking good, looking good. All right, how do you want your steak cooked? Medium rare, medium? I'm a medium rare. Okay, great. Individual. All right, so we're going to move a little quick on this part. Okay. Our potatoes. Our potatoes are partially cooked, so we're going to take our pan. We're going to need to add a little bit more oil in the, in the pot. Okay. And we're going to put our potato slices in there. The potatoes, it's important that our pan is hot because the potatoes... Either way, we'll soak up some of the oil. If it's hot, it won't soak it up so bad. Should I leave the garlic in there as well? Yes, that's the flavor. Oh. All right. And you can see when the like the if you move the pan back and forth, you can tell when it's hot when it moves really quickly. You'll see the sides start to kind of slightly smoke. That's good. And then just lay your potatoes right on in the pan. So my pan can hold all of my potatoes. If your pan does not hold it well, don't try to crowd it. You can cook in multiple stages. It only takes a few minutes. I got them all in there. Yay. OK, now let's sprinkle a little salt and pepper. And we're going to have that flavor of the steak infusing in the potatoes, almost like having um, bone marrow. Have you had bone marrow before? I have. Okay, so you're going to have kind of like that steak flavor, not the necessarily texture of it, but that steak flavor is going to go inside those potatoes. Nothing is sticking. Nothing to be sticking. Our potatoes, are, potatoes, potatoes. Our potatoes are starting to get golden brown. How's yours looking? They're looking good. All right. Not sticking. Moving Not around sticking. in the pan. Love so it. So I should just keep moving them or uh, flip them no, over? No, they're good. No, just let it cook. Okay. And at this point, do you have any any more herbs? You can throw that right on top as well. Whatever herbs you have, just throw it right on in. 
and we're going to turn the potatoes in a second. Just be careful if you put it in the oil, it might pop. Gotcha. All herbs have liquid. So as soon as you put them in, they start. So some of them aren't ready yet. All right, our steak has about two more minutes. And our steak is done in two minutes. Like, Ooh. done. That's exciting. I like that uh, <laughs> this is potentially this is potentially a meal you can make kind of quickly. You know, yes. it doesn't it doesn't take you like a, an hour and a half. Yes, sir. That'd be you. that'd be my problem because uh, you know getting the prep work down and everything else. It's just not my not my strong suit. I'm with you. But, I understand. I don't want yeah. to, I don't want to prep too much either. I mean, there are dishes obviously that I enjoy making and don't mind being in the kitchen doing when there's like a food memory attached to it. But then there are yeah. other times where I just want to have a great meal done really quickly and get it on the stove and be done with it and sit down and enjoy the rest of my evening. That's Sadly, that's how I feel with pizza rolls in the microwave sometimes. But what if your steak takes the same amount of time as your pizza roll? I would be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm turning my potatoes. Okay. I'm flipping them. I will do the I will do the same. I get a nice nice brown to them. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let those finish cooking. I'm some of the uh, your inspiration behind behind roots um family it was um about roots about cooking the food that i grew up eating um experiencing some of like baton roots louisiana the way that i did i had an awesome family who had a farm and we ate from the farm often and so when people when they talk about like southern food being unhealthy I don't have that same memory because we ate yeah. tons of vegetables. And so it wasn't just the fried chickens. Like that was, you know, on certain days. Or it wasn't just fried fish. Or it wasn't, you know, the heaviest. We didn't eat macaroni and cheese every week. Um, we ate tons of greens. We ate tons of peas. And we had lots of persimmons and figs and fruit. And so it was um, a nice change. And so I find sort of uh, those traditions um, being lost now. And I find people saying Southern is, um, you know, like Southern food is almost the same as comfort foods, but comfort food could be any type of food. If you talk to a Korean family, they'll tell you that their Korean comfort food items are. And so there's a difference, you know, like I didn't grow up with a chicken fried steak at our house. Like that's just a Southern comfort not necessarily what we grew up with in Louisiana. So I really wanted the roots to be about family. I wanted it to be about my roots, which has been a lot of travel, a lot of experiences, um, a lot of fun. And so it's it's been something I've wanted to do for a while. I just couldn't find the proper location. And, yeah. then I did and speak, speaking of some roots though, you took down a plot at our community garden, right? To, I do, yeah, I have, I have yeah. a few, yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, we have right now, we have uh, collards, 
spinach, mustard greens, radishes, beets, um, all going right now. And um, it has been some learning experiences as well. Uh, this yeah. winter was rough. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> quite uh, know what to expect with the winter after like a couple freezes, we lost a lot. Um, but uh, there's nothing like growing, you know, uh, there's nothing yeah. like growing your own. Just so you know, I cut off my potatoes. I'm going to just let them fit in the pot. Um, okay. But I love I the, the idea of gardening. I do. Yeah. Did, how did, uh, you know, this year, oddly, we've had more rainfall uh, to start this year than we have I think maybe ever uh, in North Texas. How does that affect, you know, your growing season as well? It was good. The rain is good. good. I mean, as long as, as long as we're not flooding, you know, um, but having more rain was good for us that the, whoo, the freezes did at the end. Um, but yeah. you know, I didn't, I didn't know that you were tied in one of the organizations that you support is uh, Metro Press, right? Is that correct? That is correct. I'm actually, wearing a shirt right now that says better together, which is uh, kind of a partnership between the three cities of Addison, Carrollton and farmers branch in the Metro crest chamber to uh, come together to find ways, especially right now uh, dealing with coronavirus and the impacts that everyone's having. You know, we have such a huge population that is vulnerable uh, right now in terms of not only needing rent assistance, utility assistance, but you know, most notably food, um, sure. you know, making sure that families can eat Metro crest services, um, has gone above and beyond to open their doors, open their their pantry to provide food to the individuals that are needy right now in this difficult time. And so uh, what we're doing is we're selling t-shirts for 30 bucks, masks for $5, and all those proceeds are going to go to Metro Press Services. And if we raise over $10,000 through this effort, uh, we have community partners that are going to match us in various different ways to make that contribution, you know, two, three, fourfold uh, to really try to help uh, that cause. And Help what they're doing because you know it's not just about farmers branch you know dfw is one of the strongest regions in the country and we are so because we all come together to help each other out and it's just been a blessing to work with that organization to see the number of people they're helping and uh, i'm excited every day that we have an opportunity to raise awareness and raise funds for such a committed and beneficial group in our community i love it i i know um a partial of the food that we grow at the farm goes to metro crest as well so that was the yeah. first time that I heard of it. And I was like, oh, how wonderful. Uh, so I was excited to be a part of that as well and in such a small way and, and know that we're doing some good. So you know, exciting. every every uh, every ounce of help matters. You know, it's that butterfly effect that, you know, that one tiny gesture that you made might have made, could have made the biggest difference in all of it. But that's why we all need to give and give what we can, especially those that have the ability. You know, sure. I think that's why I spend so much time trying to, to give back. Uh, where I can, because you know I've been I've been lucky in my life, and there's a lot of people that you know didn't have that ability. So you know if I can find a way to give back and help someone else out, you know it's I'm um, I'm happier doing that than I am at work or anything else. That's, that's for sure. I know. I know that's true. You know when we started going through all of this, um, I was very sad. I mean, ideally about the restaurant and um, the fact that you know everything was changing and everything we worked so hard for was changing yeah. and we didn't quite know what to do. Um, and the one thing that I decided to do was just feed people, um, just get in the cook kitchen and cook and feed people. Um, and that's what we've been doing so far with Roots. We're serving the community. We have created family meals that are um, at a great price for the community. And everyone has been tuning in weekly. Um, we're feeding first responders, we're feeding hospitals, we're feeding workers and um, it has done good for my own soul, but it has also done good for the community to know that we together again are so much better, so much stronger. Um, and if we just take care of each other, then we each will be taken care of. So it's yeah, great. and that's, I mean, just hearing your story that you're cooking 500, 600, 700 meals a day for people, like you are just a true, true blessing. Uh, and you know, the work that you're doing there and providing those meals, it's absolutely extraordinary. And I, I just commend you for all of that. And it's, you know, you know, knowing that when times are tough, you're willing to step up and try to make a difference and, and do that for, you know, the goodness, uh, not only for yourself, but for those that definitely need it. You know, I'm just thrilled that you're going to be in our community because those are the type of business owners we definitely, definitely want. So appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We got to get back to our states. 
Yeah. I just want you to see what you did today, for real. You did it, not me. I'm happy that I was nowhere near you because you're going to have all the credit for this one. You, you might. That statement carries in more than one way, I think. <laughs> okay, dangerous in the plate? kitchen. Huh? I do. I have my plate and plate. Okay. And then I want you to take your lemon and roll it on your board or roll it on your anywhere. Just roll it a little bit to get the juices activated. Okay. And then you can cut it in half. So I'm going to actually cut my steak because that's me, but you don't have to. You can take your whole steak. Um, bring over your potatoes and let's plate this baby. I'm trying to do it in an artistic fashion that would be approve great, of. Great. You know, the presentation is everything. I'm going to take my steak. Mmm, she's a beauty. And smell the garlic too. You just cutting it into pieces. Yeah, because I'm not gonna eat a whole one. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my arugula with a little lemon juice, squeeze of lemon. Doesn't need much at all. You just need something a little fresh with the steak and potatoes and just a slight touch of olive oil. And a sprinkle. There we go. Our simple steak and potatoes. Where are you at? Let me see. Where's yours? I'm getting my arugula out. Okay. And then you said olive oil and? A little olive oil and lemon. Okay. Just a drizzle right on top. And then a little, little, a little lemon? Just a little, not too much. Yep. You don't want your arugula to be soggy. You just want to kind of perk it up a little bit. How you looking? Oh, you look good. It All looks right. good. Okay. I'm impressed. Well, tasting is believing. Let's see. Let's see what that steak is like. Boom, tender. Mm. What you think? It's good. It's good. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end up eating I'm gonna end up eating the whole thing. <laughs> good. It's your steak, you should. Mm. Well, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> That looks delicious. Okay. Yeah. Now I wish I'd made this with y'all. Y'all made me so hungry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tiffany, thank you so much. And of course. I thank hope you me. guys have had a chance to go to Cox Farms Market because all the ingredients tonight can be found at Cox Farms Market, which is open at Valley View Lane and B Street. But um, thank you so much also for mentioning the, mentioning the MetroCrest Services thing. Can you each tell me one fun personal fact about yourself that uh, probably people don't know. Tiffany, start with you. Um, that I'm a homebody. Um, most people see me, they know I'm very much outgoing and love to you know, talk and chat. But one of the things that is most precious to me is to just be home with family um, and just relax, cook a meal, enjoy myself. Um, and just be home. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Robert, I know you play sports during the week. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I don't play anything right now. Um, so 
you know, getting back into it's definitely going to get tough. But uh, I used to play in two soccer leagues and two basketball leagues. Um, oh, wow. You know, four nights a week just to get some exercise on because, you know, even though, uh, you know, you would think I would go to the gym more, I, I don't really like working out. Weights are heavy. Uh, it's kind of hard. So if I can just if I can just play basketball or soccer and run around and not think about it, it definitely makes it a lot easier to get some exercise in. Okay, good, good. Well, tell us more. If, how can I order these meals to go from Roots that you were talking about? The meals for four or meals for two. Tell tell me about how I do that. Yeah, all you have to do is follow us at Roots Chicken Shack on Instagram or Facebook, um, and you can find uh, what we're serving for the week. Typically, we post them on Tuesday or early in the week. And that way it gives you time to pre-order. Um, in the pre-order, there's an email. Just send us an email and we'll confirm it and have you down. They do sell out a little quick. Uh, so don't hesitate. Um, you can email at Chef Tiffany Dairy Concepts. Um, I'm sorry, it's Tiffany Dairy Concepts at gmail.com. Okay. And before we leave, can you give us any inkling in what it's like to cook for one of the few people on the planet that only need a first name? Okay. <laughs> Are you talking about Barack? Or are you talking about Oprah? Oh, that's the name drop. Oh, that's, a, that's, oh that's right. I forgot. See, I only knew one. <laughs> we can talk that's about quite, both. That's quite the humble um, brag. Yeah, that is quite the undergrad. I don't know how we found you. So I want to know about Oprah, to be honest, because that, to me, is kind of... You know, um, cooking for Oprah was different because I was there for over 30 days um, in Hawaii. And um, we cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was three chefs, it was three of us total. Um, it, was, it was a lot of work, but it was cool because no menu was ever the same. Um, there were at least 10 to 15 items for every meal. So it was a lot of food um, and her form was right on the side. So we had vegetables from the farm. We're like, we could be like, hey, we need 10 pounds of potatoes. And next thing you know, there is a lot of potatoes that are being dug up and brought on right on over. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Well, that just sounds like a fairy tale almost, you know, <laughs> uh, except for cooking for 30 days straight. I mean, I'm, I'm about to <laughs> lose it here in my home quarantine. And uh, trust me, you cook for 600. So I will never complain about cooking yeah. for my small family again. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, we so appreciate you guys both being willing to go through this with us with our cooking with the council segment. And Tiffany, we're really excited about the Shops and Mustang Station. We're just excited to know you and hear about all the things you're doing in the community to help feed others and help others. And Mayor Dye, thank you for your participation in Better Together, feeding Metro Crest Services uh, participants and helping with the food pantry. We really appreciate that. And so guys, thank you again for your time. We appreciate it. And I'm impressed with these culinary skills. Um, Mayor Dye had mentioned that he was uh, asking what a saucepan is and things like that. So I was a bit nervous, but I think it turned out okay. I think it turned I think out okay. Fantastic. I'm waiting on our invite so we can go to dinner next time. He'll cook it for know. us next time. Absolutely. We need to see we can just this walk over from the restaurant. And if, it's not, if, if, if the food that I cook isn't good, we can just walk down the street to your restaurant. <laughs> yeah, we can solve that problem. We can solve that. Well, Tiffany, thank you again. I appreciate your time and um, we're just happy to get to know you. And Mayor Dye, thank you again for your time and glad the steak turned out okay and we didn't have to call the fire department um, yeah. like we thought, but they, they were alerted. They were alerted. So they knew, they knew cooking was on going notice. on. Yeah, they knew B Street might be a, might be a call. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I loved it. And until next time, so glad that we got to wrap up cooking with the council. Thank <laughs> you.